Yep. I think we're going to be with us. They're going to, crickets are going to be with us for a while. It's, I think, who we is. It's the society we become. We've been programmed to be that way. I'm really fascinated in part by it. So it's not too ex, too surprising, essentially, that someone like myself doesn't get the coverage that's needed. When I'm uh, telling you, like last week, I was giving you the very, very tippest of the iceberg. Bergs, I should say. There's all kinds of them. And I uh, get hardly any response to all that, explaining to you just what's on you. And that, that insight that I gave you last week, just through going through the fire policy and why you have the wildfires and how global it is and who's involved behind the scenes to impose it all, and the millstones they throw around all our necks as we don't even know the, the spaghetti western illusion that we live, uh, no one's really interested to embrace that. It's pretty interesting to me. And then we wonder why things are all messed up. We wonder, or I wonder, why we complain then. And I would uh, ask anybody who uh, is interested at all, if you go back to last week, send that broadcaster around uh, the link and inform people that this is quite a few levels of the problem that we face. Certainly not all of them. There's others. But these are the ones that I show you you can do locally and get involved and really start, stop, start to begin to exercise what we needed to do as people to stop the nonsense. This uh, broad, this pod, blogcaster vo- volume or episode will be BTWRLM280. For those of you that want to find the content, if you're on, not on the RLM website or later on when I post it, uh, you'll be able to find it on a search. Uh, I, I believe it comes up pretty readily now that you can have you have a search that will work you put the btwrlm280 to find the links that I'm going to then post later that I pull from to guide me through a discussion in attempting to show people the answers are given to us if we start to learn how to apply it to a system that has been essentially a cage that's been built around us and we all talk about not living in a cage and have our high, high uh, utopian ideas. The problem is we still, in the end of the day, we live in that cage. And it's been slowly built around us. And we were partially prepared to allow it. So behind which you had to bring some of the principles of what was what we should have been really doing, notwithstanding what we may not have been exposed to. And notwithstanding the fact that we are principled, but we just seem to be a little bit, a lot lazy as well. And I, I can't tell you I like coming here every week to even talk about all this, or that I like to do what I do all week in addressing a lot of this. But it's it seems to be the thing that needs to be done. And as long as people aren't stepping up uh, to, into the responsibility, or I, I said right in the documentation, the, those that are po- imposing this acknowledge the ultimate authority is in your state or your local uh, organizations. So that, that's a that should have been a that alone should be a big clue that when you're suffering stuff that ought not be there that it that's your your fault too. And so this is the hard lesson I think we have to learn that people tend to argue with me whether they do it over no one really argues with me they just don't they just don't engage or they engage in the wrong points or we try to do, get diffuse in how we talk about things. And I tell, I've tended over the years to have to focus my attention on how you focus, and that's been a really big thing. So I say, find, find, everyone wants to do something. Find something you want to make right, something that's wrong that you want to make right. It's the only thing I know how to cut through this nonsense. I, I can't tell you what that's going to be for you, and I can't tell exactly what's going to happen uh, to you to you when you start doing that or what you're going to need to do or what you need to know. I can just advise you on some basics, some generalities to start. And as you start digging in, then we start to focus on what's required. And what's required? That's What's required is what the perception is that you need to meet. Do I like the meeting the perception? Absolutely not, because it's a, it's a slow and fallen way to go. I would, I would have thought the law was a sufficient perception. Everyone go, oh, the law, the law, the law. And they dismiss it. From my perspective, that law is the only objective basis we can follow that takes out all opinion. Is all law okay? Well, certainly not the stuff I can see, a lot of it that's been fabricated since the 80s. A long time before everyone out here was woke, 
and that's a joke. You only woke to the part that you want to not see. All of a sudden, oh, I got to do something. I'm I'm woke only to that level. I saw some memes going through the Twitter here. Everyone criticizes those that they believe is not woke, and then they don't realize that by by what they said shows they're not woke to another level. And so I want to get back again uh, quickly, and then I'm going to move on. I'm just going to go back to showing you there's stuff in the world that's just showing you what the reality of the occupations are around us, and the slow and incremental nature of it works on us and gets us to agree. And we're tend, we tend as people to be susceptible to that slow incrementalism. That's why they're bringing it this way. Again, look at the look at the methodologies. Is the instruction that's not going to be necessarily told to you. You have to seek out the silence of that. That's the transparency I keep telling you. If it's coming transparent to you, you don't see what it is they're talking about. And then you learn, as I showed you last week, they have a set of phraseology. Uh, They're coming through those phraseologies, but that's not what they mean. But it's indicative of what they're doing. And again, you'll always find the law and local power is in control. Again, I'll mention his name uh, William Roberts said, become vocal local. And so there, there's the point. That's what starts to happen. This is what you start to say. Become vocal local requires you step up. You do something. And I'm. if you thought that this was all flowers and, and unicorns, no, this is a war. And it's not a, and it's a lot of times we're not coming direct at them. In fact, these people, we can't come direct at them. There's not enough of us. So we have to be real creative. And we find indirect ways to overcome the authorities that we see interfering. And the main one that I pointed to you last week, if you didn't quite get this, if you don't hear this and you don't pass this word around, you're all done. I mean, it's just done. If you didn't realize what what I'm exposed to you is in the American Bar Association documents about what they're doing globally in what's considered the rule of law and the prop the product of a private corporation that is the global control that's local to you if you don't grab that and understand that's the main agent change agent and see the connections of that organization alone and you think you're going to go out and have your opinions and your thoughts and you think you know what's going on and that you have it all understood or that you're just going to or the other worst part is you're just going to give up because of it that's what they want they, that's what they want. They want you infighting and then giving up. Uh, if you didn't hear what I said about that last week, you, you are in for a great surprise and a, a waste of time in your life. This is a real battle. They've come at us in a very uh, substantial way. Again, it's mostly transparent to everybody. And I I come here once a week to try and expose to you the uh, pointers of it, the condition of it. More, more importantly, how to start to approach to it, deal with it, and deal with it effectively. There are some very large problems. I, I certainly can't be you know, the one to do them on my own. I, I think it's ludicrous that you would deny what I'm telling you is a reality and then not help, and then expect that I, because I couldn't do it on my own, <laughs> that I'm somehow I've failed or that my ideas are no good or that what I found is no good or, oh, well, that was fantastic, you found it, but it won't work. See, it's, this is not. The, this is the point. This is the. That's a failed interpretation. That uh, looking at and putting it all on me or people like me is going to work to a failure, and then it looks like I was a failure. Like I said, the fool's errand. And in fact, I wasn't. I never was. I, I knew after a while, after a while, you see what you have to do. You just realize you're you're just a small piece of it. To come back from it, it required really. It did require. Now we're to the point. It required everywhere. This is global. And you can get on all your causes, but those causes are, as I've identified for you, most likely they're a stalking horse. They're an excuse to allow a control to come in. Well, I told you a long time ago, be careful. You're going to be asked to go out in the streets, and those of you that would would think about it or protest or get together with other people to protest in mass, that's not that's exactly what they want you to do. They don't want you to be little groups of uh, of, inter, of obstruction to their oppression with a focused a focused attack. As I said, with the Jeff, Jefferson Mining District and creating that and having, I thought at the time, thou, literally thousands of people who would uh, want to protect their property 
and want to learn about how to do that and how to do it effectively and across a broad spectrum of, of what was being attacked in us. I thought at the time there would be a great many people that we could uh, pull to uh, use because they would be interested in that that the thing to do, and that's not in us. There's only a small core of people that will do that. And I said that's the microcosm of America. That's the microcosm of people who believe and yak about liberty and freedom and being free. But that's going to be the limit of it. It's the yakking and the blah, blah and all this other stuff. Again, look, looking at last week's response is, uh, again, it's just a reminder to me. It all sure looks like a fool's errand from my end. And on the other hand, during the same week that I see hardly no response, those that I work with are slaying it, folks. I mean, it's just you don't hear much about it because it's behind the scenes and we're not... We're not one to take credit. In fact, that's how you how you keep you got to keep yourself humble about what you do. And that seems to work a lot better, at least we find. And more and more things start to come out, and it's moving slowly in the right direction. Again, it's like a little bitty oar in the water you use to paddle yourself in a canoe trying to turn the Titanic. Uh, turn the Titanic from where, folks? You go. You don't even understand. It. You think you know, but but I can see that most of uh, most of all y'all don't. Uh, we'd rather be fa infatuated, like let's say in the fires over uh, de-directed uh, energy weapons instead of getting to the source, folks. If there was, it doesn't matter if there was directed energy weapons. If your forests weren't set up to burn, they would burn themselves out. So we can fo focus on whether or not there's this idea of the directed ener energy. Well, I'm saying set up your condition so it doesn't matter. Make it irrelevant. And in fact, I was talking with a colleague. He focused on a word. I said, that's the word, but you got to be, you can't come at it straight. You can't go to attack these people. they got more people and they got better position than you do. You have to come at the, you have to attack that concept uh, collaterally, parallel, come sideways to it so they don't see you coming. And so what do you, how do you, how do, why would you argue against something that in the future you're going to make irrelevant? And they don't even know that, the other side, the thing that you're up against. There's a whole different strategy to build in your mind here. It's not just what you know, what you think you know, and what you can say to somebody. It's how effective are you going to be against those that are really trying to harm you. And the, one of the main groups that are really trying to harm you, and this is well beyond, you know, it used to be my mind would say, well, we've got these little idioms that we talk about lawyers. I didn't understand that, and, and, and this is really on a surface level. You just kind of, there's a big bunch of lawyer jokes, and as long as they're not, if they were gone, be the better. Well, then I ran into the mining law. It says the mining camps didn't, They'd ran, run the lawyers out. And then we got to here, in 2013, right before that. Well, actually, for myself, I was starting to track it back in the 90s. But we get to the point where we look at what's going on, and we find out that the Bar Association is the promoter of this thing, that's a, this millstone they put around your neck, and they make you the enemy. You should be interested in that, because that is your society. But what the law is, what they claim the law is, not law, it's the rule of law. It's this product, and now it has this millstone called environment. Well, that environment isn't the air you breathe and the trees you see. It's the environment and the cage they're constructing around you, the infrastructure, the capacity building, the policies that promote that, the people they get to sell that, as I was talking to you last week. You know, I think last week was, as I think about it, and I don't, you know, it just takes so much to pull that together. And I did such a, it seems like such a small amount of information I gave you over two hours that it, it's difficult for me to get enough energy to do a lot of those. But, but the answer is in there about how you, well, how you perceive what there is against us and how you would respond to it. And, and it takes more than just a cursory knowledge of what you think history is or whatever, whatever. I don't know, all these utopian ideas. In fact, I was looking at a, it's, it was sad to watch, but it's nature. It's what happens. Nature's pretty, pretty tough. It was a little sloth up on a tree. It looked like 20, 30 feet up in a tree, uh, up on a bar, on the, on the, on the timber. And next thing you know is a little sloth who looked like he was sunbathing, and you know they don't move that fast anyway. All of a sudden, he's been trying to be tugged out of this, where on the, off of his tree. And then you, then you see that it's a jaguar ripping his neck loose and pulling him off the tree, and then you see the long shot of the tree, and the, the little sloth's like 20, 30 feet up in the air. And that little sloth is being peaceful and non-aggressive and all. He gets pulled out by a jaguar, 30 feet up in the tree, thinking he was doing okay. Minding his own business, and he gets eaten by the jaguar. Pretty pretty chilling, pretty striking. You know, I just thought about that. It kind of struck me. I said, that's the definition of anarchy. 
That's the definition of anarchy. You think that you're moving into a non-aggressive, this is the new, the neo-anarchist is what I'm talking about. There's a real world out there, and it doesn't care about anybody's utopian ideas. And we have the history of that, as I told you, the stalking horse being the, an issue, and the stakeholder being Genghis Khan, in this thing we call consensus and dispute resolution. It's just another form of the jaguar jumping 30 feet up into a tree to, to snag the non-aggressive sloth for dinner. And, and I've said, be the porcupine instead. And even that's not a guarantee. I saw another video, another jaguar, pretty pat fast. And the jaguar's an interesting symbol anyway. Another jaguar. It took the lickings it took to take down the porcupine, which you would have thought by itself should have been able pretty, pretty, pretty formidable defense. It used to be a medieval defense, having that many spooky, pokey things sticking out. The jaguar was able to persist incrementally to take, finally take out even the porcupine. So it takes a bunch of you porcupines. And unless you're going to do that, we're not going very far very fast. We're going to be like this guy, the homeless people. When you get to the homeless, remember, they're going to be shared austerity, shared prosperity under the new plan that you don't, you didn't listen apparently last week enough to pass around and say, hey, listen, this guy's got an insight. We might be able to address this very problem that's coming on us. No, we're too, still too comfortable that we're not going to do that. And this guy comes along the next week to, to explain to us another part of what I didn't talk about last week that's integral to the sustainable development promotion, the A2030 part, where you go to sustainable de debt under shared prosperity, and you'll be handled within the technocratic sense. And what I mentioned but I didn't focus on, we did mention in here at the Jefferson Money District Assembly meeting this Friday, was this term that keeps coming up, it values at risk, uh, the bigger the promoter, the more times you'll hear this term uh, within the, the condition. But it's the values at risk that they're trying to protect, like any occupying force, is themselves. That's the value at risk. Because they have value in them, but not you. They have value in the method of de for your de methods they use for your destruction, not you. And one of the things of the, uh, that's going to kind of come in the future is they want to move this thing into a cashless control because it's so able to be controlled, and so are you. The flick, uh, the switch, the digital switches can be flipped pretty uh, easily. Was this matter uh, of this homelessness? And I, at the time, a long time ago, it was pretty obvious. I decided that it'd be nice if you constructed yourself to be homeless. When you understand that the word t home means your tax home, in in legal, your home is your tax home. Everything is the bottom line. Remember, that's what I've been telling you. This A twenty thirty this sustainable development, I pointed out to you that it's the bo always the bottom line. This is about monetizing you. You saw this in the derivatives. I told you all, of, I exposed all of this to you in the past. Uh, but it's all to share, shared prosperity and control. And the way they're controlling you is they get you on this uh, Internet of Things, so-called. And they give you an identity that's digital. And you, uh, we've seen it. They said it in the, in, the, in the Bible, I think it was said, that you will not be able to trade or sell without the mark of the beast. It also said something about having its number, and I interpreted that well. If you have someone's number, you understand them. If you understand them, you know where to, you know where, you know not to be standing in the street when the bus passes. And so I've taken a little bit of solace in the fact that it looks like it's pretty complete, but that there's still an, an out. Uh, if you know, again, if you know them, as you see them, and if you can't, you know, that's why they want to be transparent. If you see them, maybe you can avoid them, not evade, because they'll they'll find that as a crime, but avoid. What do, you say, what do I say? Have I been telling people in the, in the responding to their poten potential problems? The pre-plea remedies and avoidance. Prior to your plea, you have these remedies and avoidance. That's a rec the syst any system recognizes that you may avoid that condition. You better have the right answer, but and then there's still the corruption. But it's still there. That the homeless people wearing barcodes to accept cashless payments came up right after I was talking to you last week. And so I want to extend this thing from the values at risk point of view and not get into the values at risk, which have two sides. Again, there's always a, seems to be two sides of this. And you either be, you better be imposing your part or else the other side gets put on you. And we now know the legal system is attaching the environment, this condition, this control environment, not the environment you think, not the fishes and not the bird bunnies and not the lizards and not the flowers. No, it's this control environment. 
but they are now linking up with the rule of law, which I've told you is the rule of oh, law. It's just a big, it's a brand of something that they're giving you to accept. And you've accepted it in probably all your country, well, most all your countries. In fact, their agency, there's an agency of the state. In, in mo, I think I haven't found a state yet that it, this organization, this, is, this whole corporation is literally an agency of your state. And then its members, we heard last week, the entities of which will promote, in all matters, will promote environment attachment, this environmental control attachment to the rule of law. And you've agreed to all that because you haven't stopped it. It is, if you haven't picked up that problem, how that's working, how you're so infiltrated and surrounded, it's what I've been talking about for decades when I got the chance to get on air. Not many people want to hear it, but that's okay. I don't know what to say about people who don't want to hear. You want to be willfully ignorant, I don't know. You want to argue without for without a purpose, I don't know. I don't know what to do about all that. I can just come here and tell you about it. Homeless people wearing barcodes to accept cashless payments. We say, well, how cool. They can take all this technology and, and help the homeless. But you got to read these stories, because they're telling you what's coming. The homeless used to be outside the law. Remember I told you that uh, Hernando de Soto informed me in 1985 book uh, mystery of the mystery of capital that uh, the what what happens is if you have a, an outlaw it's better it's the wisdom of the ages says it's better to figure out a way to embrace that outlaw than to fight him because that outlaw no matter how small can defeat you given the right circumstances a small group of people can out take out a bigger entity isn't that what I've just been telling you, folks? Get together and start working against this mo this global thing, and you can take it down. He acknowledges that. I'll, I'm going to take that to the bank. Talking about Mr. Capital, I'll take that from the into the bank from him. Uh, some things and insights he put in there in that book were uh, very very uh, important and actually prophetic in some regard. That the outlier outlier liar must be embraced, and then you regulate him instead of let him stick him out out where he can't he can cause you trouble, and you, you always have to fight him. Now you bring him in, and he's not going to fight. You get his consent that way. The regulation. This is what about again the same method that they did with uh, cannabis. They get to regulate you now. They get to extract what they did. They get to control somehow. You get to see it right in this discussion. Homeless people wearing barcodes to accept cashless payments. Barcodes were typically made for products, folks. They were made to, for global, uh, global keeping track of global products and movements. They're moving them down into into people. They're now uh, under the stocking horse of uh, caring for people, the benefit of caring for the homeless. Now providing a, a homeless with a barcode uh, to bring them in and bring instead of being the outlier, they're now going to be brought in and brought into a technocratic system that uh, you all uh, may or may not be aware is the future system. And they can work on these people, and they can do it underneath the cover of the transparency of helping them. In fact, they're actually working out how to bring it on to you. And in the next, or after I get after this part, I'll show you how they're doing that to all you all in different ways. Uh, people don't even, they will, let's see, they're focused on their object and not what it, not all the incidentals between them and getting the object. And so the, those that want to invade you secretly, transparent to you, they don't interfere with your object. They just put certain acceptable obstructions between you and the thing that you desire. Remember I told you you'd plug yourself into their circuit, and you will because of what you think you want. And they'll give you enough toys that you're going to, or whatever, ideals and ideas and foes in the world to fight purpose in the world to go after, but you'll forget about them. And then you'll take their first suggestion as well of what's going on, and, and then just to get back into your, uh, well, your comfort. But this this is a project now. Again, this is coming out of academia. This is the university system. This always sued all this through the injunction in 2013. This is the law schools. All the entities of the law schools will put environmental impositions on rights and property. To bring in the, what? The sustainable development, which is what? It's austerity. Everybody shares in the prosperity. There can be none left out. No child left behind, folks. All this, all this stuff is right here for us to see, and we're oblivious to it for the most part. The project, which is being trialed in Oxford, is supported by Oxford University Innovation and Oxford said Business School. The Labor co-chair and the all-party parliamentary group on 
ending homelessness, said necessity has again become the mother of invention, and now there is an app to try and help generate more public donations to homeless people. This intervention, this intervention, it's not good enough that you want to do it. No, they have to intervene. I told you, they will put themselves in between you and the object. The intervention should not be necessary, but with the government ignoring the scale of the problem, any extra donations may help homeless people directly. That's the promotion. He added that homelessness has escalated in recent years, and the app will not help address the broader issues such as a lack of drug or alcohol cessation programs affording housing and mental care. The chief executive of Crisis, very interesting names they use here as well, said it's encouraging to see that people want to help rough sleepers, but the bigger picture here is that neither rough sleeping nor any form of homelessness should be an issue in Britain today. Well, how did they bring the people that are in the bottom up but to bring the top down. How do they get a piece of the pie than to interject themselves in what you would just hand them in cash for what you would want them to do for what they would want to use the money for, but to interject a, a technocratic answer, the barcode, utilizing actually the 3D barcode, the QR code, to track these homeless people and your donation with your phone that you want to give them from an account you have to sign up that doesn't go to their account because they don't have one. No, it goes to this this project that will then pre review the donation you gave and decide where that homeless uh, man or woman is going to spend that and how. And now what do they have? Now they have your donations. They know where you are. They have your, your bank account. They have you all connected up. You're in the database. They know you do that. And uh, now they have you on the tax side. They also have an, uh, absolutely know what you're in your bank accounts. And now they have you on the, on the shared prosperity side. And, uh, but you're gonna, they're going to move this thing in to help the homeless. Is a value at risk for you that you don't understand they're invading, but a value at risk for them in the risk management of finding them out. They don't want to do things to find them out. That's why they need the stocking horses. These stakeholders, now these interferers, become use the stocking horse of homelessness. And what they also do is they bring the outlier into the society where before, and remember, you can't feed those people with your donations. They have to come now from the government. Is the preparatory steps like they had in Florida to bringing this system on in the United States of America. It is not just a preparatory step. It's just out of the, all of a sudden out of the blue. It's been planned. It's an extension of what I was talking about le yes, last week. It's just another facet of it. Now, who wouldn't want to help the homeless? But see, it's not about just doing that. You can't help them unless it's through an intercessor. And you will have to give up information in order to not do this. And because they have this alternative, you'll hear that word a lot in this this process of uh, dispute resolution and the uh, millstone, the bar agreeing underneath this process of dispute resolution instead of, remember, it's adjunct, instead of judicial. See, pretty soon they're not going to need the judicial because nobody will be underneath that and needing it. They're slowly weaning you away from that. And it's already kind of gone because who runs it? But the one that's going to support the sustainable global control. The Bar Association. I don't need some idea, some idiom about wanting to throw the lawyers out now. These people are the enemies of the people. They've fabricated a whole construct. It's this spaghetti western that you're buying into. Now down to the homeless man. And the picture, I, I was really struck by the picture. It's this homeless guy. He's got his barcode card, his, his badge, ID badge with a bar, QR code. And he's trying to get it nice and steady and so the guy with the uh, hand with the phone reading the barcode can transfer some funds to him. And he's watching that phone that the guy's holding down to try to capture that QR code. It's a pretty sad picture to my mind. And what you see is this, oh, I get to do my use my phone to do the payments. They embrace the technocratic condition. You don't realize that when you're doing this, you've got a whole control structure, infrastructure built in 
between you, the, your camera phone, and that guy's badge. You don't see it. It's all transparent. And he needs what you're going to give him, and you want to give it to him, and someone's interposed themselves, and you didn't say, whoa, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's not right. Oh, but we don't want him to spend it on alcohol. Well, if that was your problem, don't hand him the money. Maybe you hand him some food. Hand him a blanket. They make a euphemism. They're a rough sleeper. Oh, that's supposed to, I guess that diminishes it, the problem, doesn't it? And most people, for most people it is. But here's an extension of what I was talking about last week in a different aspect. A lot of people don't want to hear about this stuff. A lot of people would rather turn away. A lot of people aren't involved with this. To me, these are the incremental steps coming on you that are already actually affecting you in, in, maybe not you particularly, lots of people in a lot of different ways, incrementally underneath this idea that we have to have it done. Again, remember the stalking horse of the war on terror, uh, the stalking horse of terrorism uh, is that thing. That there's an interpos- as soon as you find one, there's an inter- someone trying to interpose themselves as a stakeholder. No different than Genghis Khan, no different than any occupying army trying to take out your way of life or the way you would expect to be in the life that you thought that you had. And it's going to be underneath a new standard. That the people, the uh, going to games and things, these uh, entertainment games, NFL, the MLB, they're, those fans, they don't even understand that they're submitting their faces and fingerprints to buy food and beer and tickets already. They're already on the step and being practiced, habitualized into the same step that you're going to be doing with the homeless. You think it's only the homeless, but they're actually encroaching the same standard into the things that you want to go do, that you want to be entertained by. And you will do it, apparently, because it's working. If you still value your privacy, would the value your privacy? Values at risk, folks. You have a side of values at risk, and the, and the, and the oppressor has a side of values at risk. And in the, the end result, the end of the game will be who gets theirs on their side accepted and denies the other. And if you don't know what your values at risk are, you're lost. They will, you won't even know you've lost them. And for the most part, I see society doesn't understand this at all, how much they've lost. They still live under the illusion. I just said the Bar Association has put a an international millstone of itself and then attaching to a construct around your neck, a concept construct. You get that? Sustainable development that they said they're attaching the rule of law to is a concept. They agreed to it in all the documents I sent, I put in the broadcaster last week. Your life, your laws, your rules, your property, you are stuck underneath this private corporation that is a uses a private system of legal attaching itself to another construct of control and that's your life and future and all the decisions that issue from that condition and don't don't forget every entity available to that American Bar Association and including their members which are your legislators and your agency advisors and your agency heads Lawmakers is bringing the policy. That's why they can only do policy now, not law. Is sitting there as an, uh, an occupier that is completely transparent to you. Vote harder, folks. No, don't ask. Don't, don't listen to me and go out the whole system, or just stop complaining about it and out the thing and work. Take it, figure out what to do to out it. No, no vote harder. Keep complaining. It doesn't stop them. They don't. They could. They could care less about that. But if you still value your privacy, that's a value at risk on your side of this bean counter ledger that this whole thing devolves down to when they start talking about values at risk. It moves it into an economic condition. This whole thing. That's what they talk about when they're fighting your fires. Did you pick up that, I hope? If you didn't, you got to go back and listen to what we're talking about here. It's in all the literature. It's not a secret. It's transparent to you because you will glaze your eyes over and allow your eyes to glaze over. And it's it's dry, I'll tell you. But you allow your eyes to glaze over. You won't apply what you're reading. And you won't appear to look at it. You have people that are trying to take you out as a, a way of life, your locale, where you live, your house. I was ever hearing a discussion over why you pay property taxes and the, you rent and it used to be this way and that way. The people who were talking are great people, but they had no concept over 
the, the condition, actually, is I would tell you behind the woodshed how to end that. Why I get, why I get uh, resistance or not follow through on what I tell people is really fascinating to me. And yet I'm, I'm too dense, I suppose, to stop talking about it and hope one day maybe someone will listen. If you still value your privacy, I urge you, this is written from uh, Mass Private Eye Blogspot. Uh, whatever. <sighs> Just a, <laughs> It's an internet site. Uh, if you uh, still value your privacy, I urge you to stay away from major league sporting events. Yesterday, C-L-E-A-R, you would pronounce, most people would wrongly pronounce it clear, like we do inadvertently when we say NASA. No, it's N-A-S-A. Won't get into too deep deep a thing there. If you don't understand, the, if you just say clear and don't say C-L-E-A-R, you don't realize there's a name behind that, those letters. It means something. It's a code. We've been reading codes all our lives and didn't realize it. But look at the word clear regarding checking through somewhere. And I, it occurred to me, too, if it, whether this is connected, I don't know, but the Scientologist will attempt to clear you. And I find these correlations kind of interesting, if, if not, con- they're con- coincident, if, if, even if they have no meaning, they're, they're interesting. But yesterday, CLEAR Biometrics announced that they have installed biometric fingerprint scanners at Seattle Century Link and Safeco Fields concession stands. But the story does not end there. The video also revealed that MSL's Sounders FC team is using biometrics to spy on fans. None of this should come to us as a surprise for, uh, for to soccer fans. Earlier this week, Russia revealed that the U- they used SITA's facial recognition to spy on 1.2 million World Cup fans. Now, SI, you, know, you could say SITA, but there's a term in the law and legal called SITAS, and it's the ones, the place, the home where you are subject, your sitas, and here's the sitas. And I don't find that uh, these are these coincidences are unmeaningful. I think these are these are really uh, pe- these are people that are telling you that they think this is a it's not a joke what they do, but they're they, they think it's a joke they can make these acronyms and other other to make a, like you think that something else is going on or tell you the truth without you knowing it. It's transparent to you, like the word patriot, P A T I R O O T Act is not Patriot Act. Okay, they make you think that it is, but you could be lulled into it. But that was uh, that's the trap. And these people are uh, smug, and they I, mean, I, I really think they joke about this stuff. I think they they look to do that to you, and you eventually will accept it because you don't really fight it at all, or come together to start figuring out whether or not you, it, it's fightable. I, I say I say that whether or not because again, you could fight something, or you could uh, interfere with its ability to function, and that's kind of how I, we, in a small band of people, that's what I think. You know, the guerrilla tactics works really well in this as well. And and so it's a, it ends up being an interesting Sherlock Holmes uh, study, investigative reporter condition, and then it's a, you're, you're doing counter, your own counterintelligence and infiltration work uh, to defeat somebody. And if you don't, they're going to do, they're doing it to you. It's done. It's happening now. Their intelligence gathering capacities, you know, exponentially increased and now we're hearing it's global remember i told you last year that last week this is global this control grid nobody's out of it no nation's out of it and so that's a different control underneath that too maybe i mean not different but it's it's a control uh, it anticipates a control underneath that as well notwithstanding all the disti- supposed distinctions um going back to the world cup fans Mo- uh, moscow as a, as a quote uh, domo Dev- dedovo airport the technology provider SITA today summed up the success of new automated gates, which were introduced for passengers in time of the 2018 World Cup. In just over a month around the championship, more than 1.2 million passengers took advantage of the new technology to speed their way through the airport. So you see the gift of the call, the benefit of going through faster, and yet you're giving up a value uh, out of turn for and trade for that. And they consider that to be a, your consent and a, for a consideration and a contract. And then you've consented. Last month, CLEAR announced that they have installed facial recognition scanners in at least 12 major league baseball stadiums. So you say, well, I'm not the homeless guy that's going to uh, take my donation. 
but you'll go buy a ticket to a to a game and you're going to be put underneath the same product standard and control as that homeless guy because whoever's putting the system in is interposing itself between you and what you want to do in March of this year I warned everyone that uh, well the writer here warned everyone that major league sports were using CLEAR's TSA pre-check to spy on fans and last year uh, the writer warned people that Lincoln Motor Company was installing complimentary what's for free folks complimentary TSA pre-check scanners in all their new vehicles so fans can gain entry into the stadiums this is the price of admission folks listen to how they do this this is your buy-in this is all the consensus process working in all these areas that I was talking to you last week for fire we're just pointing on fire it's trying to give you one document you can go familiarize yourself Look at the situation. You don't like the smoke in the West? I gave you some way to do it. Did I get much response about that? No. Everyone apparently likes to breathe it or doesn't care if it's not in their face, doesn't care that those same model is working in their in their jur jurisdictions and allow in their face, essentially, what's coming along and coming on them, as I pointed out to all your property owners and through your uh, blockchain and the, and the adoption of that through all the various county clerks. He talks here that he's warned everybody. Remember, we, I just did the report. I just tell you, here it comes, folks. They're putting this stuff in your places. They just stop participating. This is what they ultimately want you to do, too. This came a long time ago. I started reading the court said, well, if you don't want this to happen, don't go do it. Well, that was a, that was a, that's not necessarily a good thing to hear said from the standpoint of what do you do about it, but it is a truth, and you better start to re-gauge what you do. And from those days, I started to realize the real prison we lived in and I started to already acknowledge I wasn't going to be doing I wasn't free anyway that was a joke it was a bad bad story it was a it was a tall tale and so I re just rationalized that, that maybe I should accept the fact that well I can play games with my own head and pretend that I'm free or I can go ahead and put myself in the place that they want me in the future and then they can't afford if they can't affect me until I'm violating some parameter that they want me to do. And so if I'm already existing in the place in the future that they want to put me, I'm unaffected. But I can still function. But I have an insight. And my insight allows me to function. Not like a lot of people that will deny all this stuff or just complain about it. And not gear up for the fact of the austerity that's coming anyway. Protecting you, putting yourself in a position to where what they, the requirements are can't attach to you. And as I've been trying to explain to you, I think I've been explaining whether or not everyone's listening, I don't know, how when they do now, it becomes a felony. And a lot of this is killed just by saying no to the technology. A lot of this is stopped just by people not engaging and not engaging in the so-called benefit of ease or speed, or they'll claim security, because, oh, we can't trust people to make their own decision. You can't have the homeless guy get a, a dime to go make sure he doesn't collect a bunch of them and go get a, a drink that he doesn't need. But that's another political question either, as well as we heard. That's just a system that we've got a system of control that drives people to do that stuff, and no systems to, to check it, no systems to help. Uh, but going back to this story, see the TSA is involved already everywhere in all these places. We've heard about this. I'm tying it together that you will pay for your stuff. You will get to have permission to get things when you give up what the assist, what the technocrat wants. The homeless guy will get your domain donation and you'll willingly con control it because he's been given a card that you can make it so easy to give him the, the uh, digital transfer that uh, you are going to forget about the fact of how, how much privacy value you've just given up and all that. And they're going to make an outlaw to do it anyway else and now you're trapped. Because somehow two of you can't be considered mature enough to make a contract and expect it to be fulfilled. That's another value you've forgotten, you've lost in all this technocratic thing. In this entertainment, you get to you get to give up your face, you get to do what fingerprints, whatever, just to go watch a game. Stop going, folks. Otherwise, you are the herd, and you will be herded. And now here, for those of you that say, "Well, I don't do that," well, remember. Those of you, the fewer and fewer there are that they that you don't do that, they eventually can find you because of your of that difference and that distinction. 
this is what the anonymity, the digital anonymity is. You go in and you look like everybody else. You don't look like no one else. That's how you get identified. It's a pretty interesting thing to, to realize. We're not so simple. It's not so simple when someone intends to control you. And it's really, as I'd see it, when you don't even know you're being controlled. That's the simplest one for them, isn't it? Uh, the, uh, the recent article in TechCrunch shows the grim picture of what fan privacy in America looks like. Well, I want to, if they can get it, get get the homeless guy and you to to do that, and to get so that he can go buy food and and whatever they allow him now, because now they're interjecting themselves. And the same thing here, I don't see a difference between the two conditions. All I see is a different way that they have uh, this these people who are getting this, these technocrats who get the control, have acquired it. They still prey upon your needs, and they take those as a benefits to you, which is really fascinating. That's the stocking horse. I've been talking about this for years. The picture shows that what appears to be a concession employee, a customer, and a CLEAR representative being used as props to promote losing one's privacy. TechCrunch's writer Devin Caldaway claims it is a privilege to join CLEAR because people can skip waiting in line while ignoring the fact that people are losing their privacy for the sake of convenience. TechCrunch is hardly alone in trying to convince Americans uh, that using biometrics is fun, right? There is nothing fun about using facial biometrics to enter a stadium, and it certainly is not a privilege to use your fingerprints to purchase food or alcohol. Privilege, convenience, and fun are all words meant to distract us from what is really going on. Uh, the statement here, slowly but surely, Big Brother, with the help of corporations, are using biometrics to track our every movement. And I just realized I've read that whole article, which I don't normally do, but this is exactly what I've been saying. We were using terms last week to show you uh, they distract you, but they're actually speaking to a thing. Uh, he calls it Big Brother and corporations. Well, the Bar Association is a corporation. Big Brother is this euphemism, okay? It's gone beyond just the Big Brother, Uncle Sam thing. This is global now, folks. You really have to start putting this together. And the biometrics tracks every movement. Well, what tracks every movement is your consent to all this. And at some point, you don't realize how insidious the consent has been that does track you, and you've already given your consent, and if I, I don't think I'm going to get to it again. But uh, at the end, of the end of the tabs I have here, they're showing we're being reminded again of the global prison, this digital prison that's being constructed with the ability that they exploit what you think you need. If you think that it's not, you're not homeless and, okay, I don't go to Major League Baseball and I don't go to football and you know, I don't go to myself, I've just decided I don't go anywhere, folks. I just I really focused on the task at hand here. I really already live that austere life. They're not going to get a whole lot from me. And to get me, they're, they're going to have to, well, they'll have to come in and get me. Because I've confined my life to the future, life that's coming, and I can't by myself avoid. And so while I do that, I'm fairly well free to continue now to engage the fight. If I'm engaged with them already, no matter where I go, then I'm already giving them the information, to def the, the data to defeat me in the future. And this is the insidious part of this as well. But bodies, for those, okay, so I'm not a homeless guy. I look like a homeless guy, but I'm not a homeless guy. I don't attend the, the entertainment, the breads and circuses uh, where I don't have to. Well, none of the breads and circuses at all is, as far as that limitation. I'm talking about the other things like uh, that they give to us to go enter into. I used to stay away from them. But what, I don't do that. No, what about if I have to move about the, move about the city? Well, they're, they're, we've been told these systems are coming in. You heard TSA is giving complimentary systems. Well, for those of you in L.A., body scanners to screen L.A. subway riders. So it's coming and slowly encroaching. This uh, condition I talked to you last week, the promotion of sustainable development through the use of the judicial system by legalism, and the entities that promote, that push all that, are in your states. When you enter into some kind of objection about this, the likelihood of you winning, unless you understand this, is probably zero. 
And the way we approach it is we eliminate their ability to make all the stocking horses and be, we out them as a stake, stock, stake, uh, stakeholder. We out them that they, we, we bring the ledger of all the rights violations that their adjunct system was to re, not to disregard. In other words, the savings clauses come forward. As I said, the local authority, your authority, you get, if you understood this from last week, it's your authority that runs this, ultimately, and they'll tell you that. What you don't do is understand that that is the fact and take that gauntlet up because uh, it is a gauntlet that they're sticking in your face and they're hoping you don't pick it up. But the, in the, it's the first mass transit system in the U.S. to adopt the technology. Portable scanners will be used to screen passengers as they enter stations without them having to pass through the security checkpoint. Authorities said the screening would be voluntary, but those refusing a scan will not be allowed to travel. Why? Because your travel is a privilege in an, in an occupied state, remember? Now, some, I don't have the time to check, take all this stuff on. There's a way to address all that. This is, remember, this is the administrative side. I've already talked about this, uh, how to address this, and how to begin to make it known about this problem. But it's voluntary. The fact that you're there, you volunteer yourself to all this nonsense. But now they're ex explaining... And this was done in UK at this point as well. So this is again global. Remember Moscow, LA, and UK. It's global. This imposition. Why? How is that? If everybody has different jurisdictions and different laws and different rights, was a clue. And I've been talking about this for quite a long time. But this is so. You think you're not a homeless guy or not yet, or a homeless gal not yet, or you don't go to major league baseball games or concerts or theaters or whatever. Well, just maybe get into a place now that's in the subways. Why? Because that travel is a privilege. Well, they say getting on the streets is a privilege, too, unless you understand behind the woodshed that there's a right underlying right to the use of that highway that they can't interfere with, and the interference of which is a felony. So another article weeks ago, and my tabs, I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to bounce, but the tabs are getting longer and longer. I just can't get to this stuff. So much really to talk about. I'm talking to the choir at one level, and I'm talking to nobody because no one actually takes what I say and, and works with it. Or when they hear what they have to do, I guess it overwhelms them. I don't really get the call back. <laughs> Pretty fascinating. Uh, more and more of what we do depends on government position. It was an article I read, found weeks and weeks and weeks ago. But it all kind of comes together here. As I've been talking to you, you can't be homeless now. They'll come to knocking on your door. You can't go to a, a game uh, to watch your entertainment. They'll come knocking on, uh, on your door. You come, you go knocking on their door, apparently. And uh, now you can't even go use the subway. They're going to want to know about you, what you're doing, where you are, how you are. The database gets done because it's voluntary, you see. And then the, this article from Reason, and I understand this might be, a, if you will, a left-leaning left -leaning prob publication, though I don't really pay attention to too much of that. And I always wonder, why are you leaning any direction? Why don't you just stand, be up, stand up straight, you know, stand up straight. Be up standing straight up. No, you got to lean. You know, like there's a big stiff wind in your face or something. You got some some you got some defect disability. You got to lean in a direction. You can't just stand upright. What what happened to that? That we accepted all this. But more and more what we do depends on government permission. Was an article that was written and it goes to start here increasingly the theme of modern America. More and more of what we do is dependent on permission from the government. The permission, unsurprisingly, is contingent on keeping government officials happy. Rub those officials the wrong way, and they'll strip you of a permission to travel the roads, leave the country, and even make a living. That's not a recipe for a free country. In February this year, the IRS began sending the United States Tax Department lists Americans who have seriously delinquent tax debt so that these individuals can be denied the right to travel overseas. The only, this only applies to seriously delinquent tax debt, Caution, cautions tax attorney, Mr. Wood, tax attorney. Remember, all their entities are combining this whole global construct together. More than $50,000, even so that $50,000 includes penalties and interest, and $20,000 tax and debt can be grown to $50,000, including penalties and interest. And a passport revocation isn't contingent on criminal conviction or suspicion of flight. Your travel documents can be yanked just for the outstanding debt, even if you're already outside the country. What do we just talk about the body scanners over there in L.A. and it being a privilege? 
And I'm going to suggest to you that they use the word Americans here. That's not true. Go look at the tax code. They'll tell you who you are that's liable. And that's how you have to start approaching this, even with the IRS. And I'm not going to make a more comment about that because it sends too many people in the wrong direction to get themselves in terrible trouble. Now, I've talked about the due process that's required. And you've got to focus on that. And that's the, probably the limit I'm going to say right here. But now, if you've got these tax liabilities, you've agreed to the tax liability, and you're delinquent, this database will be combined with your, your other database. And then you try to make that donation to that homeless guy, maybe that money is going to be sent over to the IRS while you're delinquent. Even if it's a wrong wrong assertion and you haven't cleared up the area because you cleared up your uh, the, the problem with your taxes because you don't know how to deal with the government. What are we doing here? More and more of what we do is dependent on permission from the government. Is it, folks? If you go look at the definition of license, it's called a permission. When you go look at what the subject matter of a permission is, you find out it's a trade, occupation, or profession, and you find out it requires an application to be filed. That means you've done something. You've applied something to you. So I, I had an issue. I understand what the concept was in this discussion, but the title promotes something that's not true. And this is the thing about the interposition. More and more of what we do depends on government permission. Is that a truthful statement? A lot of people would say yeah. In fact, I'd probably say more people would say yes than would even know to say no. And if they said no, and I, I'd have a couple of questions, and I don't think they would have the answer there. I've given you the answer. It's not a secret. But does it depend more and more on government permission, or is it the people in the governmental offices that are trespassing the law and that you haven't called it out? And no, not enough of us are calling it out either. And so I wanted to take issue about this, this document, this statement, that more and more permissions are, depend on the government. When you look very carefully, no, they don't. But we're allowing it. Like we allow and volunteer lots of things to befall us and then complain about it. Or just put up with it. And I took issue with the term more and more. And I say more and more really depends on ignorance. And, I, and in, in a Twitter a long time back, I kind of thumbnailed the problem. The license is commerce, folks, trade, occupation, or profession. It doesn't deal in grants. It doesn't deal in land disposal. It can't deal in production. It's a chasm between production and commerce. So there's a distinction in the world that has to be regarded by even the rule of law. And they have no authority to attach the environmental imposition, their technocratic uh, control. So law, license is commerce. That's the permission that you all are asking for that's not talked about in that article. And that's regards the status, your, sta your state status, what you exist, your character in a, within a jurisdiction. And I directed people to read very carefully the Title VIII of the United States Code at Section 1185, and remember that the U.S. is a district. It is a district and it's in a district. And you've got to read that section very carefully about it controlling the travel of control of citizens and aliens. And for a check as to where that is actually effectable, affecting, what it affects, look at the word national regarding the House of Urban Development website link that I have over here. It's a document. It has a definition. The state of the U.S. And you look at that, it's called a territory. And I turn around and ask you, is the state you live in a territory? That this federal imposition is applicable. And when you see a federal imposition in L.A., has the feds taken over your state? Or did the states cease to exist at some point? And is, even in that takeover, were they able to interfere with your right to travel or the use of the roads, ways, viaducts, and everything else determined and defined as a highway or a trail? And you start to have to parse through this. It takes a little bit of time. You find out your status is not such that it's regulable. 
they had to regard and save to you the rights that you have. When they built the system, they attached it to an existing system, the rights of which go into there and in to use the, the facilities that have been constructed, which makes it not a privilege to those that know how to assert it. But the administrative imposition here through whom, whatever the administration is, is susceptible to attack. It becomes that color of authority and position that I don't hear anybody discussing at this point. And if you are, more power to you. And if you're not talking to me, I don't know why, because we need to know each other is out there. But this article says more and more depend on uh, government. No, what the, the government is now invoked by your own actions. When you look at what the legal is, you find out that it only goes so far. When you find out that the government official in there either doesn't know that or will try to deny you that, they now become a felon. When you charge it out as a felony, the obstruction, and you don't get an, a, a help in that by your local law enforcement official, you have a different problem, and a problem nonetheless. And so we have this ripple effect of oppression and occupation that has gone on this country, United States of America, despite what the underlying foundational rights are that nobody fights correctly, nobody even puts a, restrict, uh, a resistance to, no one outs in the proper way, and it is allowed to be foster and encourage what has now become the very thing we heard last year is this these impositions, this millstone, what they call environmental, which is actually the international imposition of sustainable development, which is just a concept. It's not even a policy, folks. It's, it's not even a, it's just an idea. And your legal system has done that to you. That when I see the word more and more comes from government permission, I see a mass ignorance in definitions. It's not spoken of in that article. And I'm trying to raise that awareness of this mass ignorance, and we have to, well, you don't have to admit to your own ignorance, that's up to you. But if we don't, we then don't put ourselves in a place that we, we are more immune from being attacked. And the being the failure to do that allows the system to attack us and keep us from being effective. And that's the danger of that if you can't see that happening. And a lot of people get undermined by it. And I work really hard not to get more involved in extraneous things that way. It, it takes up too much of your time and you get, uh, there's a lots of distraction already. You, you, don't need, you don't need that. So you try to, for the mo it's like a taking a couple steps back from the battle in order to find the more effective way to, to stop these, these people that come as, a, as an authority when they're authorita. They, these licenses, and if you find it in commerce, that means it's regulated by the federal government. What if you're not in commerce? And what about the one that's in the official's office that's not recognizing that and has a duty to recognize that? Do you know how to extract that pretty quickly without going on and on and on? I can tell you it can happen in like two or three sentences. And I mean bullet point sentences. And why aren't more of us doing that? And why are more of us more doing that instead of going ahead and getting our phones and doing donations to them or going and, uh, going and using the subways without engaging the fact that why are you, pre you say I'm volunteering, but to do that you've also had to say that I'm suspect of a terror and a terrorist and an enemy combatant. Where did, that, where did you get the right to do that without probable cause? Has anybody started that a conversation? Got it, made a good record of how that starts to work? How is the federal government sitting inside who has jurisdiction over a territory inside a state, supposed state, that's supposed to have its own controls? For all you Tenth Amendment people, that, that's been destroyed so long ago, it's not even funny. And I try to bring for you all, we have rem, uh, vestige of it in the, in the um, public land law of the FLIPMA, the Federal Land Management Policy Act, in Section 1712, I think it is, that coordination sits there to recognize the Tenth Amendment. Why aren't you using that? It's been destroyed where the state doesn't step up. But I pointed out last week how the state is subverting its own Tenth Amendment rights through this uh, ins insidious cancer that's in the system. I explained that last, I don't know if you picked up on that, 
when I talked about the Oregon policy of the vision for the federal, the federal management of the lands for fire, that was the state's relegation of its own Tenth Amendment authority through a non-law process. And yet you have local beyond the state, closer to the ground, if you will, the power to, to overthrow that. You'll argue with me or you'll think I'm talking some, some blue sky or whatever the heck it is you, to dismiss what I'm saying. And I'm giving you, if, if you will, the keys to your own kingdom in the process that's being used to destroy you. And it's through these little, these little opinions that you see written. Uh, more and more they admit, they say, and they complain about it. More and more of what you do depends on government permission. That's only when you concede, con accept into the authority that they are offering. Buy in, folks. It's all the same process. Moving on, a landmark legal shift opens Pandora's box to DIY guns. I was going to talk about this a long time ago. Again, don't quite get here fast enough. It's kind of, like I said, moving on past things, but there's important information in all this. Five uh, years ago, 25-year-old radical libertarian uh, Cody Wilson stood uh, on a remote central Texas gun range and pulled the trigger on the world's first fully 3D printed gun. Uh, when, to his relief, his plastic invention fired a 380 caliber bullet into the berm of dirt without jamming or exploding in his hands, he drove back to Austin and up uploaded the print the blueprints for the pistol to his website, defcad.com. He launched the site months earlier along with an anarchist video manifesto declaring that gun control would never be the same in an era when anyone can uh, download and print their own firearm with a few clicks. In the, other, in the days after the first test firing, his gun has, was downloaded more than 100,000 times Wilson made the decision to go all in on the project, dropping out of law school at the University of Texas to confirm his belief that technology supersedes law. That's the way they profess, preface this. Now, that starts that story. We talked about it. I just made a comment to it. The problem I had with the, state, the story that, they was, uh, that was printed, uh, the landmark, titled The Landmark, A Landmark Legal Shift Opens Pandora's Box, from the DIY guns, as I've responded to them through the Twitter, the truly regrettable writing at Wired, law caught up and law was surrendered to his will, uh, was what they how they characterize this. And again, the characterization is what leads people's minds. The law didn't catch up or surrender, but took five, this is legal that's, that's trying to resist, it's dragging its feet. Law didn't catch up or surrender, but took five years to finally be recognized costly regs infringement. They characterize this as a, he beat down the system. In fact, it was the system wrongly coming against him. And what isn't even a gun printing issue it has to do with your more appropriately to the First Amendment right to tell, give information. But a landmark shift in quotes I put here, their use of landmark shift was actually identifying a prior infringement by the government. Pandora's box, as they shift here, is really the Second Amendment. And that invokes, then, my thought, shall not be infringed, intends what, then? Because when you look at the importance of what the Second Amendment was added a year after the Constitution was, uh, was ratified, you, you find out there was a problem with, they hadn't checked, and they realized they hadn't checked, that government may go bad, because government goes bad. And there has to be a check that would be recognized that couldn't be used against people. So even if this wasn't a Second Amendment issue, you would have right to acquire the need. But I'm going to caution everybody. I don't, unless even so, unless you have a, met, a metal sintering machine, I'm not a 3D printer. I'm not so sure I want to use plastic as my uh, as my my material for making a, any kind of a Second Amendment appliance. As they said, he, he didn't blow up in his face, so he thought that was cool. Now, the so the problem we see in the promotion in these again in these publications is they they characterize it a certain way, and I see this no different as saying, "Oh, these are rough sleepers," or "This is the homeless, and we're going to help." And then they interpose themselves. The the language is interposed here to get us off of a certain points, and the purpose of the Second Amendment doesn't make sense to peaceful people, but it's necessary, was a concept responding to uh, Trump. 
where he made a comment that it didn't make sense. This 3D DIY, trying to enter into the fray, if you will. But see, the Second Amendment to peaceful people is kind of an insult. But it's necessary. And that should evoke a, a reality. What well, I said way on earlier, the, the little sloth on the tree, what a sad thing, but the jaguar ripping it off its neck, you know, ripping it off by it, breaking its neck and pulling it off that tree, living with a non-aggression principle and still being attacked by a predator, is the world, folks. I don't like it. But there, there's the reality. We, we have to contend with that. And there's people that exploit that. The jaguar being the, I mean, the the epitome of that. 30 feet or so up in a tree, and it made it up there to yank that peaceful little critter down for dinner. And the government uses you for dinner. It's a parasite. The Second Amendment issue that this evoked, and this is an ongoing issue now because some states just popped up, but even the, the, the Trump entered in. I don't understand this thing. So what, what is that, this thing I don't understand? But the point is, is that the Second Amendment is really not making any sense anyway if you live in a, if your intention is to be peaceful. But it's necessary. Remember I said the word, there's a necessity. They inter, the interferer said there's a necessity to help the homeless. They invented that. And necessity is the rule. If you look at international law, if you can find, I told you, be careful of the necessities, but if you need to work with one, that's probably your best your best position. Make a necessity. As I was interjecting last week a bit about the fire policy and the local control, there's a certain structure that you have to figure out a way in. The necessity of breathing clear, clean air because of the requirement in the policy to regard health was how you have to go in and force the federal authority out for its failure to regard that. If you listen carefully, I'm telling you in these broadcasts the very things that you need to do and how to go about it. I'm not talking about just la-la stuff or blue sky or things that we don't already do and have to do in order to make validity and displace those that will harm us. And as I put in this Twitter over to back to the President of the United States on his didn't understand the, the efficacy of a DIY plastic gun, it had... It's not about that. It's about the First Amendment right to do the sharing of the files as well, the information. But my, I also made another observation to remind you all, and those of you that are involved with this know this as well. Apparently the NRA stands for Not Reliable Advice because the, the President, uh, President Trump was relying on the advice of the NRA, which comes up again in this whole issue. Because what ends up happening now, there's a big complaint as these plastic guns are apparently tra not trackable because they're plastic. They're not re receptive to these all this equipment, this surveillance equipment they're putting in. And so they made a law a long time ago that you couldn't have a gun that could not be seen by the technology. Not just by the technology, but that when it is seen by the technology, it has to look like a gun. So you couldn't hide its camouflage, it's the look of a gun. Well, guess who that was done by? That was agreed to by the NRA and put through by Reagan, if you think that these GOP is protecting your rights. It's a slow incremental encroachment upon an infringement of your rights. Well, where does that go back to, the infringement on the second? But the UN and sustainable development and the pistol of the, that sits in a plaza in the UN United Nations on your soil, the United States of America, folks. If, the, if, all, the, if all the evidence wasn't clear enough to, to, to you there, I, I don't know what to say. So this, this thing about unidentifiable becomes a focus of the current administration, Trump, and, and Sessions, as we go through this story about a guy simply putting up a data file for other people to use in a, in a plastic uh, 3D forming machine, fascinating technology, uh, that shoots a gun that you have to worry about whether or not it's going to blow up in your face. And now there's kind of interesting videos out that show you that the plastic will hold up for a while, but you don't necessarily know how long. And so to me, this whole exercise with the printable guns is just an exercise in the machine, just some other thing you can make. It's not really, really functional in a real way. So in the regard that there, these guns are now the excuse, the stocking horse, oh, we've got to be able to keep track of where these guns are. Remember, this is the government that you have right to defend yourself against. This is the oxymoron of this whole thing. Eight states sued when the 
injunction that was against the prohibition of his presentation of this on the Internet was going to enter. Eight states sued the federal government the defense distributed over gun-making computer files. Gun-making computer files. This is not the making of the guns. This is the computer files to make a gun. In a lawsuit filed today, and this is back uh, last month, uh, 20 days ago or so, a few federal court in the Western District of Washington in Seattle, a state of Washington, along with seven other states in the District of Columbia, insist the federal government's decision to settle a multi-year lawsuit with Defense Distributed, a company launched by Cody Wilson, creator of the first usable 3D gun, plastic gun, dedicated to distributing gun-making software and hardware, and the Second Amendment violates the Administrative Procedure Rules, uh, Procedures Act and the state's Tenth Amendment rights. Well, isn't this fascinating? The government of the state's coming in, suing in a territorial, federal territorial court for the rights of a state. It's pretty fascinating to me on the front of it. But under the Administrative Procedures Act. What Administrative Procedure provision did they violate to make an agreement that they would not prosecute further or defend against Cody's uh, injunction against their prohibition. It's a fascinating study all of its own. But the state stepped up nonetheless. That's you folks. Supposedly the people stepped up. And they went to Seattle of all places, one of the hubs. Nikki Rapana will tell you about Seattle and its sustainable development control. And she's moved out of there, as I understand. Never talked to her, uh, never met her. Uh, Just through her writing, she's now in Alaska, out in the farthest reaches to stay away from all this stuff. I don't even haven't heard from her or watched or seen anything come up. But they went to Seattle to a territorial federal court has no jurisdiction to, uh, to def- defer- defend uh, states' rights under an Administrative Procedures Act. I don't know of any settlement of a lawsuit that has to go through Administrative Procedures Act. But anyway, here's your states doing this. Seven of them don't like that they were using this fact of the printing. And a lot of this comes down to the fact that these plastic guns can't be traced. But that's the law that says they can't be traced. It doesn't mean that because you make them in plastic that they're not traceable or that you won't fulfill that requirement when you construct the gun. A lot of people seem to, but that doesn't mean that... the uh, that it can be, because the simple answer is really found in the, the law itself. You just have to make, making, make the plastic identifiable. You can add stuff to this gun. But getting over to what you would think that the uh, ACLU would step up and, and want to defend against uh, the ru- First Amendment rights, for sure. Oh, and the Second Amendment, got to be for sure. It's all Constitution. The ACLU, a group of lawyers, should be defending you from, uh, from the encroachment of all this. Well, the American Civil Liberties Union, an organization that once so rigidly adhered to the neutral principles of, in the Constitution that it famously defended the right of neo-Nazi group to march through a Jewish-laden Chicago suburb in Skokie, has been increasingly rejiggering its positions to correspond with the left's hard lurch towards cafeteria constitutionalism. This week, for example, one of its senior policy analysts came up with an imaginative rationalization of limiting gun rights. Quote, the wide availability of guns and their misuse in leading to restrictions on Americans' freedom, the organization tweeted this week, and that that needs to be part of the firearms debate. The piece, the tweets linked to to makes a pro-liberty case for gun restrictions, which though it's become a tedious misuse cliche over the years, can only be described as Orwellian. And so here's we have this double, this double meaning, this use of the of a, by the occupier to do something that isn't normally done. It's counter to your uh, your intuition on how it gets to work, and why I keep focusing on this stuff last week about how these terms are driving the ability to focus in on who the op- occupation oppressor is and how they're going to take you down and then therefore how to respond to it. It's one thing of the offer, uh, to offer a collective rights argument regarding the Second Amendment, the wrong thing according to the Supreme Court, but still an argument tethered to a legal concept, and another to nakedly rationalize the limiting of rights of law-abiding citizens because bad actors are creating anxiety among voters and politicians who, in turn, abuse their power. Well, folks, you go and turn into voters and politicians, but that then says that they can overpower the actual law. And this is another one of those avoidances of the responsibility I have trouble with. The point about this article is the ACLU is not stepping up. They're actually making excuses. 
Well, anybody that's done dealt with the ACLU or done any research realizes that they're not, they've never been put here to protect the, the um, rights. It's only been so far as to promote an agenda. Don't ever forget they're bar members. And that's what they're promoting. And remember, we don't say it much. But sustainable development is, when you throw in the corporation control, is socialism but with a fascist twist to it. And then it moves into a technocratic financial control. So I don't know what the word for that is, but that's what it is. So I don't get all fancy on what you call it. I just know I know them when I see them, folks. I don't care what name you put on it. i got to be ready to deal with that, not the name. But the ACLU has basically quit defending the Constitution. It was another story that came up with uh, the ACLU came up with a co comment that they wouldn't protect certain rights. And that it was because they wouldn't wa didn't want to continue to press a Second Amendment right because that brought on a different problem that they aren't there to protect. Remember, they're attorneys. They're an NGO or their group. Their entities will put sustainable development. They'll sing the high praises to the UN that has in its plaza on U.S. soil a pistol with a knot tied in the gun. The ACLU will not step up in, in defense of gun rights, and they are not a part of this thing with uh, Cody Wilson. And so we were getting uh, the, the truth is coming out. That you're starting to see who will go far, how far they will go, who will go and how far. And the ACLU will, will not go that far. I liken it back, or, the, or Nick K. not liken it, I point it back to the very point that we were reading last week, even though we were talking about it in the context of fire, it's in the context of the global control of this thing called the rule of law. It's a thing, it's a product. It's an adjunct policy, a condition now upon your life. It has been. But now we get to point it out without opinion, without contra controversy. So in this condition where we have an attack on the First Amendment, we have an attack on, on, uh, on the Second Amendment, we have an attack on a lot of other things as well, if we were to expand this out, you are not hearing the ACLU uh, doing much of anything. In fact, they're coming out and uh, making excuses. Our defense of speech may have greatly or lesser, may have a greater or lesser impact on the equality and justice work to which we are also committed. What's equality and justice? This is a statement right out of their own, own hands. They say our defense of speech may have a greater or lesser harmful impact on the equality and justice work to which we are also committed is the conjunctive and environmental statement I said last week that the ABA said they are going to commit to enforce and promote sustainable development. Equality and justice has to do with socially, uh, social justice and economic equality. Shared prosperity. They're telling us right here we are also committed to that. Is why they can't go to the absolute uh, toe the look to the line of the of the rights in the Constitution. They never have been able to. They couch it in racial equality, but it's not. Uh, they say social justice, that's Agenda 21, it's racial equality and women's rights. That's all sitting inside the stocking horse principle as well. They admit here in the first paragraph they are imposing uh, Agenda 21, sustainable development, uh, the impositions of that environment that they don't describe to you unless you read more to find out. It is this cage that they're building around everybody globally. So the ACLU is now outed by their own words, and they're not going to be actually, and never have been, um, what can I say, enforcing the Constitution, enforcing the principles. They were utilizing it as a stalking horse. They're a stakeholder. They never change their character. Nobody really understands this dynamic. We can go, oh, we hate lawyers, this, whatever. I don't hate lawyers. Just get them out of my face. Get them out of my life. They belong to a membership. It's a corporation They're called an association. It's a legal entity. It has professed to do us harm. I don't even know what it's doing around anymore. It's been professing to do us harm for a long, long time, not just the last two decades. But this focus now, we now see that ACLU is nowhere in sight to defend Cody Wilson. He's got to do his own stuff. He goes through to learn to be a lawyer. He says, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go, I'm going to go actually set against that. I'm going to show that we have the right to do certain things. And I can tell you, don't forget, he's doing it underneath a certain 
prescribed objective basis. He's not inventing the basis here. And for all of you all that think that this just flies without uh, without uh, restraint or constraint or control, there is a control grid even there. That's why I call it a freedom, not being free. He's ap operating within the range of motion provided to him, or provided to all of us, actually. And so we're never free of that at this point. And then we got further constrained by this uh, agenda that is then controlled by those that declare the so-called law, which is really only opinion. It's an adjective condition. It's a, dis it's a, um, a describable condition, not the thing itself. So these interesting little stories popped up about the use of guns and the way I, I started picking up at the time, here, like I said, three or four weeks ago, there was this control thing coming out about the guns. It's always going to be there because of who's running the show and why. And it, it's clear to me what's going on. I don't, I, to me, it's not a debate. It's the fact that we have someone who's set against, their ideology is set against this, notwithstanding what the law says. And they, brought, they have the methods to have you avoid the law if you will allow it. And your silence is allowance. And so this is, again, a, a recurring condition and theme. At the same time, all this is all popping up about the states going against just the mere printing of a, of a, of a data file to construct something in a machine. We have a story that popped up, kind of a little interesting. It's kind of seemingly died a bit, but it, it carried on for quite a while. But within it was, the, was this um, promotion, a continuing promotion. Police search continues as an image of the doctor's shooter spotted on a on a video was a story at a, the day after a beloved Houston cardiologist was gunned down while biking to work in a Texas medical center. Houston police have released a sketch of the person of interest. Well, it ends up not looking anything like the guy they end up catching or they claim was involved. But this starts an interesting dialogue. And what comes out of the story was, to me, again, within the story, was a statement by the wife who condemns the act but then brings on a statement which I thought was indicative of a promotion. And they were saying that she made the comment, it's like a mantra, which bothers me because when you're really stricken by this, you're, don't, you're not centered around mantras. Uh, she brings up the concept that we have to have common sense gun laws. Why that phrase came up when it's everywhere else in all of the authorita that wants to control all the people imposing was a real a problem for me. They talk uh, President H.W. Bush, this is a, his cardiologist. Uh, there could have been a thing around that. What did he know? I don't know. I'm not going to get into whatever all that was. This ends up being a guy who kills this doctor, apparently we're told, over a 20-year grudge of the doctor killing uh, his mother uh, through some failed surgical procedure. Guy held a long, long grudge. But what came out of this story was this mantra that we need common sense gun control. Now, that is the thing that they are pushing at the NRA. That's the thing that they're pushing at the UCL, ACLU because why? They have to deal with, they have to balance the. They have to watch out for their other commitment, which is just global sustainable development imposed in your countries. And so I found this a little bit of a trailing promotion, the, the killing of this doctor by this guy. And in the stories, they take every opportunity to give you those terms, sell you and promote to you the thing that they want you to eventually agree with by your act or to not argue against when they go to impose it. What they want, common sense gun laws. Well, common is not, it's the vulgar sense, and it's not the constitutional sense. Why don't they have what constitutional gun laws? Because that's law. But what comes out of that problem is the suit actually is enjoining an injunction of the enforcement of an agreement. They violate a contract, folks underneath the provision of the APA, which I don't understand how they can do. That's not, I'm not making that analysis. They do stifle the ability to promote, uh, to push, to uh, provide those files. Uh, and now that, that's where that case is, is, is in, in hold, as we now don't have the benefit of looking at someone's 3D files for creating 
uh, this thing called a gun. The complaint by the uh, by the the administ- current administration of which is threatening that they're going to enforce the law for untrackable guns. And I went to look at the law again. The NRA agreed to this. They compromised, agreed, so they're not your friend. Well, the people that go in and represent the, AA, the NRA are what, folks? They're, but but the attorneys in the Bar Association. A Reagan signed off on that law, but says you can you have to have an identifiable gun, and you have to have so much met steel in it. And I, I looked at that and said, okay, what's the, why is the printing of the file a violation of that law when before it can come out of the shop or wherever you your bedroom now there's a 3D printer you have the ability to fabricate four ounces of steel strap it on stick it on screw it onto the outside of the plastic to make it look like a gun in a steel frame shadow so it is trackable is the administration presuming because you use a 3D printer for that purpose that you're a felon and you see that the whole thing is not right and that's the, again, the attorney general sessions is what? But a bar member. And they're, and we see the ACLU saying, well, we, we can only go so far in the United States Constitution as it does not interfere with our commitment to international sustainable development impositions. Remember, those are demands on you. They're demanding your guns now. They're demanding that you breathe smoke. They demand that you're going to live in austerity. They demand that you now have to use a system in order to do a donation to to a homeless guy or gal. This is the earmarks of of control of of a society that's not you. It's you're now having to pass through their control and their agreement. Whether whatever you you might think. And what again? So you, the, the article. More and more, we go through permissions. No, it's ignorance, folks. It's more and more. There's more control. And even if you have those things, there's a there's some indication that they're not absolutely controllable, and there is an extent to their control. Even if they are issued by a government. A federal court says taking people's driver's licenses away for failure to pay court fees is unconstitutional. And so for those for those that are looking and saying, well, more and more ask for permission, well, that permission is conditionable too. And I wanted to point out that when you start applying all these conditions on the con- on so-called sovereign, even within the context of an application and an issuance, there is still law that applies. There's still some objective basis that's supposed to apply. The failure to apply that of which becomes a crime if done by a official. Federal court says taking people's driver's license away for failure to pay court fees is unconstitutional. Well, if you go look at the Constitution, it's not supposed to be a court fee for justice. No justice for no purchase for justice. But see, they put a veneer. And so then they can charge you for their service. It's legal service, isn't it? And so they have us not understanding what the whole situation to begin with is, but they can't use those those fees to deny your ability in order to go make the money that you need to pay the fees. And now you start to see another secret here. It's like the same thing as taxes. The only reason why they're looking at you to pay taxes is because you're dealing in the system that provides the remun- so-called remuneration of which is in that form that they have control and created. That they're taking their cut like any other mafia. Good news out of Tennessee. A federal court has struck down the state's modern debt prisons, debtor's prison system. In Tennessee, if you pay, fail to pay a court fines and other fees associated with an arrest or imprisonment for more than a year... Your driver's license is revoked. While it may not be a punitive, as punitive as rounding up debtors and locking them again, up again, which obviously severely restricts their ability to pay off their debts, it basically serves the same purpose. Someone without a valid driver's license will find their ability to earn income restrictive. Driving to and from work with a revoked license raises, risk, raises the risk of being fined or arrested, placing residents even further away from settling their debts with the government. The lawsuit was brought by two men 
who've been unable to make regular payments and have been placed even further behind by having their license taken away. Their struggles are briefly described by, in the court decision, which reads, in short, Thomas and Hickson both live in severe poverty and both owe court debt related to past criminal convictions. Thomas is totally and permanently disabled. Hickson has spent time in recent years living in a homeless shelter after a period of incarceration. Each man struggles to afford the basic necessities of life and is unable to pay the court debt assessed against him. Because they failed to pay their court debt for over a year, Thomas and Hickson had, have both had their driver's licenses revoked by TDSHS. So that's the narration from the judge. You got, you're in a total incapacitated condition, and they still want their pound of flesh from you. This court says you can't do that. And I'm going to tell you the underlying principle of that is you can't give what you ain't got. And you can't give them what they ain't gave you. And that little principle, I haven't heard anybody talk about for so long, it's like I think it's going to go down the memory hole. That's what this is all about. You get into that system. And, you, uh, and that system gives you the so-called income, which you haven't identified, for a resident, which you, status you haven't identified, and they get to take their pound of flesh. You're taking benefit. Anyway, this article goes on to say, the scheme, the state believes that this is an effective deterrent and the one uh, of the only ways to guarantee repayment of fines. In fact, a spokesperson for the TDSHS has already stated that the ruling is disappointing and the agency is reviewing its legal options, not law. This suggests TDSH thinks license revocation works rather than just disproportionately punishes the poorest residents in the state. The district court, however, disagrees with this assessment. Quote uh, a statement as a, a scheme that revoked a driver's license of a non-indigent court de debtors after one year of non-payment would pass would pass rational basis review because the threat of revocation would plausibly serve as a method for coercing people into paying the debts. Under the Griffin line of cases, however, again, particular line of cases, which may or may not be applicable, or maybe others are applicable. This is how they play this game. Under the Griffin line of cases, however, the court must specifically consider whether the scheme's lack of an indigence exception is itself rational. Revocation would not be an effective mechanism by, for coercing payment from a truly indigent debtor because no person can be threatened or coerced into paying money that he does not have and cannot get. I don't know how long ago, strange a case, laying a cases there are about this, and it seems that everyone's forgotten about this except for this judge. This is the underlying premise. And so this, what did I tell you before? I'm not homeless, I just look like it. The, look at what corporations do. They make it look like they've got nothing. It makes it look like they've been spending their guts out trying to keep up. And the, the bottom line is we got nothing, tax man. So you can't tax us. Is to me a jealousy on your part for not the techniques of which you're not embracing is a jealousy on your part for your ignorance. The residency is caused by a condition. If you have a can't make that statement and you, you can't meet that, can they consider you a resident? If you're not a resident, is, are you making an income? And if you don't not, then what do you call it instead so they don't tax you for it? And then imply that you're a resident, that you're fraudulently omitting to tell them where your home, your business, your tax home is. And if you don't have that tax home, are you not then homeless? Aren't you like the first guy in the first in the first discussion I just talked about? Only you're not using you're not in a condition that you're in a place that you necessarily have become subject now to academia to give benefit to put you in a technocratic circle. But you're really just looking at a legal system of which you you realize what they need and you don't give them what they need and all of a sudden now you can show the evidence that you're not the status. If they haven't given you anything, then they can't exact anything. Even if they have given you something, they can't exact in a different way. In other words, the court fee. I uh, won't read more about that. These are principles that are underlying this whole thing that people don't use anymore. The fact that the government isn't really here to benefit you, you apply that, and then you complain that it's there. 
And then you don't understand that it's not how to make it look like it's not there and that they've violated you in a felonious manner to, to keep them off. I have to say, I mean, maybe people don't understand some of this. You don't hear about it. There was a couple years back you, when there was a fire in the forest, miners didn't get to go in. That was a real, they really had everybody locked down. This year, there was a readily, ready acknowledgement that we, the miner at least, at least the miner, a property owner, had the right of ingress and egress. That did that change did not happen oh, be, just because someone recognized the law finally. That change happened because we've been behind the scenes grabbing and scratching and clawing it back to the point that they're finally rec they just recognized it this year. Is the another clue you take my word for it what how this works. Uh, that they are taking your stuff because you let them, and it's up to you to go back and get it and hold the, hold it accountable. This court says the uh, different type of principle: you can't give what you don't have, and you can't. Nobody can demand from you what you don't have. If you get that principle, you'll start understanding how I'm saying you need to make yourself look in a certain way that they can't do the exactions because you ain't getting it, and there's no proof around it. We do this concession to uh, to our to ourselves. We give up the too much information. We think we know what legal is that we can answer to it and don't realize that we actually can't. And they're not speaking to us. Oh, we'll have all the adjectives on what kind of a man or woman we are. Free, sentient, bred, flesh, blood, bleeding, you know, man or woman. That's, that's irrelevant. What is your status relative to that jurisdiction? What have you done to either allow the imposition of a presumption that works against you or taking the benefit that they've offered without relying on your underlying foundational rights is your problem. The way to stop the homeless problem uh, with the donations that they're interjecting is don't use the phone and don't use the card. It's going to be very hard for someone that needs that money, like the homeless guy, to not take up the benefit that's going to help him. So make it so easy. While someone comes in and parasitically takes its cut and then puts both parties into this system, that you have to go to the court itself and hope that they come up with the right answer. That to do the most obvious thing to say, listen, you can't demand something that they haven't gotten. And understand, the reason why they make the demand is because the license says you should be making a profit. But when you're not a good business manager, they're saying, you can't uh, be exacted at this point, even if you're making violations. You can't take the issuance of the use for what it does. See, what it does, it does is give you permission to go work in the business, on, uh, of your business on the highway for a profit. That is irrelevant to the ability to pay, to pay the fees, uh, the fines and the court costs for violations. There's another principle. But they're saying, if you're running your business to the point you aren't getting any return, you can't demand, be demanded anything. It's a principle you need to understand. If they're not getting benefit of that thing or that system, and there's no evidence of it, they can't demand it of you. I say the other side as well. When you are in a place that they can't attack you because you're already granted to do something, now they're committing a crime. The impositions of these fees in which are just more extortion, more uh, coercion. So, uh, again, the, the principles here are pretty simple. We apply these things to ourselves or we allow government or whomever, third-party stakeholders, to apply things to us, supposedly give us a benefit, and then exact from us what we've agreed to. At that point, you haven't a complaint. The agents of which have imposed this will not go to the point where they will enforce your actual constitutional rights. Understand what you heard in the UCLA story. This is why I tell the minors they can't go to the attorneys and actually expect the law to be applied. And a couple of the attorneys that are viewed by the mining community as being the uh, mining lawyers are really just thieves. They cannot um, assert the rights because they're not in that jurisdiction. They'll talk about it. It'll be placed for everyone's consumption that it's being talked about, but the, the actual representation will not 
push that. It will go down the administrative side, which is a subversion. Remember, sustainable development is the antithesis of property rights. It's a subversion of your property rights. That, that would require non-dependence, and they can't have you deed non-dependent. It has to be interdependent. So these terms that they're using are very important. The facts, the reality of, I don't know why it's even been a question or it has, it even came to this, that there was a case. You can't give what, I mean, you can't, what do they say? They can't squeeze blood out of a turnip? Isn't that what they've said? That's all we're seeing here. Why was this even a case? It's because the system isn't what you think it is. It's not law first. It's what can we exact first? And for how long? And only until we're told we can't. It's partly why I say get to the equitable remedies because that's pretty quick. It's a pretty quick path. When uh, the state issues these things, all these fines and fees, they're getting a, a revenue stream, aren't they? But when you find out your state is actually the bar association and its controls underneath the Model Business Corporation Act, uh, everything they get is a revenue stream, not actually what you think. And it is using the FRN, which is another administrative condition. It's a false imposition, not in your rights. It's not wealth, it's debt. It's actually attached to the sustainable development thing eventually as they will then cloud it. As you're going to watch, folks, be very careful of what's happening here in the world. The other countries are taking positions now which are going to make it very difficult on the FRN, and I think uh, we'll be seeing some increased, uh, what do they have in Venezuela, inflation? Your money may be coming very quickly to a point where it's not, not worth as much. And I'm not sure how the dynamics, what the check and balances are. I don't look at it that close. Maybe I should, but uh, there's a thing changing in the world, and what it is is to harmonize the whole world into this system. So understand when that happens that it's going to be more costly for you. Your lifestyle is going to be driven down farther and farther and farther. You're going to be put like the uh, 2008 problem with the MERS. You're going to be driven into homelessness. You're going to be driven out of the middle class. There'll be only two classes, one of the controllers and you. Sharing the wealth, the prosperity, which will be zero prosperity. Why? Because there's no actual wealth, which is what I talk to trying to preserve in the land. But the revenue streams go out, and they go to these states, and there was a discussion made on the Internet about this control structuring uh, that is the tool they use that all this communication for the Internet of Things and how you will do the homeless donations and what, how you'll pay your fines in the future to the courts and how they know your bank accounts there, which will probably be attached, attached pretty quickly. Uh, they'll be utilizing blockchain technology in order to pr provide a, an indelible record of all this stuff of forever, cradle to grave. Uh, they'll do it on an international level. They'll impose the environmental constraints. Uh, all this stuff will happen. Something as simple as a tax uh, can have dev devastating effects. That a little thing went through. I didn't, didn't hear many people talking about it. Uh, utilizing the system of control, the infrastructure called the w Internet, and the revenueing and the, and the money becomes very important. The, the greediness of the states to, to even go after you and drive you into despair in prison because you can't pay what you don't got, and no one sat back and had any empathy to figure that out on their own. That's how, more, how morally depraved we are. They had to go to a legal system, a legal, ethical, supposed ethical justice thing, that's diminishing you to already get that answer, it didn't happen naturally, should trouble you a bit. But Internet stocks tumble as uh, SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States, rules on the state Internet tax collection. Supreme Court just overturned 1992 rule. All right, so there's a ruling. But they did, but they're going to overturn now, showing you this is legal, not law. And this is a problem when you try to use and anticipate the world and they live on notice, this is a notice to you that can be changeable. So that's the first thing coming out of the gate. They changed the ruling. And then, so you look back in history, that's not un, this is not a precedent that they changed the ruling. That is, that is evidence that it's not a certain place. It's not actually law. It's opinion. And it's the next, as we see as well, we get back into the 1938 condition, it's a political-driven system as well, which puts us outside of any judicial determination as well. So this has been going on for a, a long time, this interposition of what we would think is a judicial decision, 
And remember, Scalia told us before he died, well, you came to us. What's your complaint now when we give you the answer? Uh, thus, free, okay, the 1992 rever, uh, rule was reversed by SCOTUS now, uh, freeing states and local governments to start collecting billions of dollars in sales taxes from Internet retailers that don't currently charge tax to their customers. And so here's, you're going to be paying it ultimately through the raised price. The basic infrastructure now has to come on, but everybody that does business on the Internet, you see how they now drop that ruling and it becomes borderless except to the fact of identifying a particular jurisdiction that will be the beneficiary of this. And you have to start breaking down this stuff on a federal level to see how the revenue goes from the business to this entity, which is another business called the government, uh, from you ultimately. And within the, context, the concepting of the system, uh, you are given something and you are going to pay a part of it back because you use that system. And showing you the Internet of Things is really a private entity, a control, a tool of a private entity. And we see it here through the state, so-called states, that the Supreme Court cha just changed the ruling. And now states can now go back to anybody that's doing business in that state, even though they're not registered as doing business in the state. The siding, uh, siding with the states and traditional brick-and-mortar retailers so now we see an interest there on a 5-4 to four vote. So that was a real decisive, wasn't it? Now Bloomberg reports that the court overturned a 1992 ruling that had uh, much made much of the Internet a tax-free zone. Now let me offer you this. Once it's into that, you know, there's dark web has to be exposed too. So for those of you that think of, that's going to be a refuge. Even if you're doing something illegal, the IRS wants to know how much money passed through your hands because they get their... They're the, they're the organized criminal that gets their take as it passes through. That's the government. So when they did this ruling, they now opened the whole of the any communication up to scrutiny for its tax collection obligations to a particular jurisdiction. But because of that, <laughs> stocks tumble. So we see the imposition of a tax liability and it interferes with commerce. And I don't know of any bill coming out to interfere with that, so Congress wants this interference. And they it's all fictional, but it doesn't matter because there's this, this interaction that goes on that makes it look like it's real, and we all believe into it. But this is going to affect uh, companies uh, the, across, the, across the Internet, and uh, those con companies are not in the Internet. They're actually registered in a jurisdiction. And so they're findable. In the legal side of this, they're all findable. And this is going to start raising more costs to you and me if you participate. And we heard about the tax man. We hear about all this. All this is integrating, folks, right? Whether you see this or not, the integration is transparent. It's controlled by a global web of uh, organized criminals who tell us in their documents there, com there is no separation between your laws and the and the imposition of the system, as we heard last week. And so to know how this condition rolls on us, what they use to bring austerity, how they find, uh, in various ways, you think you're not one of those, you're not, I'm not one of those, so it's not going to affect me, I cannot look at it, I cannot have an opinion, and then you find out you're doing something that, that you're one of those. And your life is parasitically attached and eaten away from uh, even that much more. And it's so incremental, you give into it. You just keep, continue to give into it. It's all, all you do. And at some point you get you get upset and you start to complain. And sometimes you start complaining in the proper way. And sometimes that gives you something. As I start saying, you better start making your complaints in a substantive way, in the proper way, in order to, we can slow this thing down. And I think in some of these in some of these regards in the in the slowing of it down we educate people to these dual this these parallel statuses that are not uh, changeable you one you can be one or the other and they can't interfere with each other without being a crime causing a short circuit if you will in the system and if you start learning what those are i think in the future as we come down people will understand how they can make themselves look like and they are but they now know how to make the record to make sure they are not mischaracterized as a commerce entity
and they start learning. I was telling you, make a parallel commerce, uh, parallel money, if you will, which is admitted to be the, the coin, gold and silver coin. And you stay away from that digital side because that's the future of the technocrat control when they bridge, uh, they, excuse me, they mischaracterize everybody into a commerce product. And uh, you are treated as such, as a domesticated animal would be. But there's going to be limits, and they re- they're they reached. And you they reach only because someone yells out and in the proper way. Uh, getting to the communication, the censorship matters, uh, which have been prevalent now coming on as they start culling uh, people uh, from the Internet. A judge rules in favor of a right-wing a ring-winger suing Twitter for banning his account. I uh, wanted to bring this up to show that Within the context of the corporate infrastructure of the of the web, uh, the Internet of Things, apparently there is a limit. And I, I'm bringing this forward to so those of you that are complaining uh, about the censorship. Continue to complain or maybe follow, uh, look at what these people did and figure out how they were success, successful against uh, Twitter and maybe expand it. I've been asking a couple of you who have found interest in some of this censorship stuff. There's ways to also go after it. And I put Twitters out about the phraseology that's out there that they even use themselves that they're violating. Uh, that you have a way, even with when you find, I guess when you find yourself in a prison of sorts or, or controlled by someone and abused by someone, there's still, however thin the, the or tenuous that is, there's still something that you can say, and and you and you need to be saying it. And I've been here behind what you had to say. You have a certain way to say it. Here's a, an example that uh, something on Twitter happened and the anti-censorship, anti-censorship suit went through and it says Twitter could be guilty of false advertising by holding, out, holding itself out as a public forum for free speech while reserving the right to ban expression of ideas with which it disagrees. So that the, the terms of service could be viewed as being unconscionable and that would be a violation of law. They don't have the right to make an unconscionable thing. That was my interpretation of how this might work out, but this is the way you start to learn to attack, is on the principles of the agreement. And until we, we do this more properly, and stop whining and complaining, we're going to watch the, the, the degradation. I think the guy, came, Jack, came out and said, yeah, they lean left. I don't know why they don't stand upright, folks. Why are, we all, why are we always doing something to lean a certain direction, in particular in the way that someone offers us as a, some authorita some academia, some IRS agent that says, oh, you, we got to take your pound of flesh. And yet there's evidences throughout the thing, the, the condition here, that they don't have that right, and you have a way to ad- address that. And as I've been explaining, you just mi- find out where they defamed you, where they mischaracterized you, you identify where they didn't have that right, and how what you're doing can be framed outside of their authority. And now you have a place to defend. You have a place to be innocent in. Otherwise, the presumption is you're guilty as charged. Thank you for listening today. I hope something I said invoked uh, some ideas that get you involved, get you inspired, uh, get you working in the right direction to solve some problem that you want to make right in your life and make it for the rest of us. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. And uh, I guess we're all, forget the uh, Freedoms Network's going down. Everybody move on over to worldtruth.org, I guess. I don't know if I'm going to go there or not. I'm getting tired of bouncing around, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, thank you uh, for what, all you all passing the, the uh, sharing and liking and whatever and passing the d- reposting and remirroring the broadcast. I appreciate that. we got to get the word out. I hope people can do better uh, for ourselves, yourself and ourselves. I'll be with you next week. Tech Diffs or Nature Willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.